Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Zane Nabulsi. I'm a senior developer evangelist with Microsoft. And if you haven't gone out yet and gotten my book, make sure to grab it, Coding Faster, Getting More Productive with Microsoft Visual Studio, written with my friend Sarah Ford. You can see all my contact information in the upper left there, so if you need to get a hold of me, go for it. And today we're going to be talking about using the new IntelliSense in Visual Studio 2010. A lot of good info here. Uh, this is standard information I include with every tip. So uh, the original blog post, uh, just the keystrokes there if you want to use them based on your keyboard mapping. Uh, the menu options if you need them, and so on. So go ahead and uh, help yourself. Now this is a combination of actually two tips, just so you know, VS Tip Edit 16 and VS Tip Edit 17. Well, that's enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump right on into this. So, what do you do? Well, you may remember a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we had this thing called Visual Studio 2008 and all prior versions. It used to be, whenever you used IntelliSense in prior versions of Visual Studio, if you type something like DO, what you'd get is this huge, long alphabetical list, right? See this huge thing? This big old massive alphabetical list. And it would stop at the item that begins with the letters you type. So in this case, DO, it shows me do, and then it goes to double, and then ultimately to duplicate, and then else, and continues the alphabetical list. Um, and it's been that way for quite some time now, right? So this isn't new information. Uh, what is new now is when we go into Visual Studio 2010 and do the same thing, now when I type the letters DO, it's a significantly shorter list. You can see here, very short list. And why is it that way? Well, it's that way for one very simple reason. The only thing you see now are those items that contain the letters DO somewhere in them. So in other words, it's no longer a begins with operation, but instead now IntelliSense is an includes operation. We're looking for everything that includes the letters that you've typed. So why did we do this, right? Well, we did this because oftentimes you may not remember what a method begins with, but you certainly remember something inside that method, right? You'll always remember one little bitty thing inside that method. So you can type as much as you know, and it definitely narrows down the list so you can find stuff. Now, if that's where the experience ended, that would be cool, but it wouldn't be awesome. Let's go to awesome now. So notice here the method called app domain unloaded exception. Here I'll just zoom in on it. App domain unloaded exception. So if we actually take a look at that, you'll notice it's in Pascal case. App domain unloaded exception, uppercase A, D, U, and E. Check this out. We now have support for Pascal case in IntelliSense. App domain unloaded exception. And remember now, it's an includes operation, so maybe you don't happen to remember all the uppercase letters, just a few that happen to be in the method name. All right, no problem. I'll just type uppercase D, uppercase U. It narrows down the list to a couple that contain the letters that I've typed. So in other words, IntelliSense now supports an includes operation, but also supports uppercase letters. And because it includes stuff, you can type just as much as you remember. Very, very cool stuff. All right, well, hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you next time.